guys, this is Tara with Kittens, Weights, and Tarot, and today is part two in my numerology series, and I am having a lot of fun doing this because I have been just so into a numerology as of late, especially with the book that I've been reading, uh, Numerology, The Romance in Your Name by Juno Jordan. Um, and that's where all these exercises that I'm showing you here are coming from that book. So don't think that I came up with these at all. <laughs> I just want to be able to kind of share some of that knowledge from the book. And of course, I encourage you guys to go ahead and get it. I think it's like $16 on Amazon, but of course you can always get it used. Um, but yeah, I'm having a lot of fun and last time in part one uh, we learned about our birth number we learned about our destiny number um, oh, sorry we learned about a birth force number we learned about our destiny number um, and we learned about our heart number so kind of like the opportunities that were afforded us you know once we were born you know uh, and uh, things that are easiest for us to obtain but that doesn't mean that we're gonna go ahead and obtain it because that might be different from what our heart wants which is our heart number um, our birth force was the uh, skills that we have in order to obtain some of those opportunities um, but yeah I'm having a lot of fun and so in uh, if you are interested in part one you haven't seen part Part one definitely go see it I have like a little playlist going now uh, where this will be the second one in the series it'll be a four-part series today we're gonna be looking into um, your personality um, and again this is based on and I did a lot of the explaining in the first video this is based on your birth name so although we may hyphenate our names we may change our first name we may take our middle name as our first name we may have a nickname, we may change our name completely. Um, we are just adding uh, new skills and talents and making our path a little more unique, um, adding to the name that we were born with. So the name we were born with has a certain vibration that's set out for us. And then with the names that we kind of change or hyphenate, it just kind of adds to the flavor of that path. So, um, and that's according to Juno Jordan. Um, if you are a numerologist or you're, you know, have studied a lot of numerology, you may be like, well, some of these exercises, this is how we would find the destiny number. This is how we would find the birth force number or the personality. That's because uh, uh, there's different modes of study for, for numerology and so people might go about finding these things a little differently. I just happen to like the way uh, Juno Jordan uh, did hers. And again, um, her book is a lot older than I thought it was. Um, it's like from the 60s, <laughs> um, you know, or at least she started in the 60s and ended it in the, in the mid, mid to late 70s, um, but it's really fascinating. So hopefully, you know, if you like these exercises, definitely dive a little deeper. This is just basically skimming the surface um, but I think it's fascinating. So uh, I have done a lot of these exercises, actually all of them that were in the book, and I have them in my uh, journal here. Today we're going to be looking into the personality uh, based off of our first, middle, and last name, the name that we were born with. And the personality number is basically how others see us. So it's not maybe our genuine personality, who we actually are, but it's definitely how we're perceived by others. And sometimes uh, we have like, uh, we have issues when, um, you know, people are reacting and responding to the personality they see. And then we're like, <laughs> we have conflicts because we, we may be like, that's not who I am, you know, or whatever it may be. And, you know, it's just good to maybe have that you know, foresight is like, okay, this is how people are seeing me. Do I want them to continue to see me this way? Or do I need to change things up so people can see me the way I want them, you know, to see me maybe a little bit more genuine or maybe you are being genuine. It's just kind of coming off a little differently. <laughs> so uh, that'll be fun to look into. Uh, we're also going to be looking at the reality number and the reality number is your ultimate goal later in life. So um, the things that we want when we're in our retirement years or our older years uh, are probably a lot different than when we wanted when we were younger. So this is like your ultimate goal. So like the, the ultimate destination, what I want to do, you know, with my life in my later years. And then last, we're going to be looking at the planes of expression. Um, that's the, you know, the different planes. So we have the physical plane, we have the mental plane, the emotional plane, and the intuitive plane. And so uh, by looking at the planes of expression, and again, using our first, middle, and last name, we look at how um, 
we express our talents and the way that uh, we uh, deal with responsibility when it comes to those four different planes. So that's also interesting too. And remember that all these numbers, like, <laughs> like look at the individual numbers as well as like the outcome number and, it, and it's just interesting. So uh, let's go ahead and I'll point this camera down and uh, let's have fun with okay, that. Okay, so now that we have the camera turned around, um, this is what uh, I had done in part one. So if you are interested, like I said, go ahead and go back into my playlist and look up the numer numerology of you series um, where I went over the destiny number, the heart's desire number and the birth force. And of course, this is my first name, but this is not my middle and last name. I kind of created a fictional name, but these are names that I have always loved and kind of always wanted my name to be. Now we're going to be looking at our personality and what numbers we need to look at for that are the consonants in our name. So remember uh, what I said in part one on how to find um, like what, uh, what number corresponds to what letter. Uh, so basically we go in nines because we have to keep everything, um, you know, single digit. So it goes A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. And then we start at number one again, <laughs> J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R. And we start at one again, <laughs> S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Okay. Should, uh, hopefully clarify that. Uh, but I went over that in part one. Okay. So now I am just going to write down the number consonants in my name and I will get back to you. Okay. So I have uh, given a, no a numerical value to the consonants in my name. So area of Tara Rose Amrita is two nine nine one four nine two. Okay. So we are now going to add these numbers together. So nine and two is 11. And remember that's one of those special numbers. Uh, so if you are interested in what are those special numbers, go ahead and go back to part one. Uh, so those special numbers were 11, 22, 16, and 19. They just tend to carry a, um, an, a little extra something, something, uh, to the number. But of course we still have to break this down into a single digit. So one plus one is two. Nine plus one is 10. Uh, one plus zero is one. Uh, we have four plus nine plus two, so nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. One plus five is six. Okay, uh, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these single digit numbers and we're going to add them together. So two plus one plus six. Okay, I'm gonna put my little ditty over here. So that's three, three, six is nine. Ooh, interesting number for uh, personality. Okay, so I'm gonna just write personality number. Okay, so now let's take a look at uh, what Juno Jordan uh, says for these numbers. So remember this personality number is just how others see you. It may not be your actual personality. So you may think of like, well, that's not how I want others to see me. Cause that's not who I really am. You might want to be like, okay, so what do I need to really look at or check, you know, about myself, um, that makes people see me this way, which is not the way I wish to be seen. Okay. So the meaning of the numbers always remains the same one through nine. Um, it just, you have to adapt the meaning of the number to, you know, what we're looking at here. So we're looking at personality. So, um, let's take a look ski for you guys. So go ahead and, you know, add up your numbers and, um, yeah, I'm just going to kind of go through here. So a one personality, and I'm not going to read the whole paragraph cause we'll be here forever. <laughs> so I'm just going to very, I'm going to simplify it. So a uh, number one personality um, is uh, says the person who is always outstanding, not forceful or aggressive. They're dignified, correct in lines and detail. So I'm thinking like, you know, a very like standout upright person, you know, but you may be like, uh, that's not how I want others to see me. <laughs> um, but this is just how others see you. If you got a number two, uh, the two should always be neat and make cleanliness important and generally does. Uh, you may even be fussy about having everything exact in detail. And maybe your personality actually matches up to your real personality. But again, this is just how others are seeing you. 
And number three is generally friendly, easy to talk to, uh, maybe art more artistic in nature. I uh, like to wear jewelry, more fancy clothing and ribbons and bows and the like. Um, going into a four personality, um, looks well in tailor-made styles, um, ha loves the straight lines of the one and the neatness of the two. Um, good material of durable wearing quality should be chosen. Um, so it says a uh, number four should never be overdressed. So they, everything is like just so, you know, so you have like the combination of all the, the other numbers leading up to the four. Very interesting. And number five personality is inclined to be up to date at all times, versatile in selection, but may go to extremes just to be daring and in the limelight. So maybe loves to, <laughs> you know, have uh, be in the, the center of attention, likes to be in the know, what's what, who's who. Uh, we have the number six. It says uh, often fails to give importance to looks or clothing. Uh, so maybe uh, a, little, a little sloppy, maybe uh, generally sympathetic and inspires confidence in others, though. Might be the motherly, fatherly type. Um, not really style conscious. Um, more uh, easygoing kind of person. A number seven personality um, gains through a well-dressed and well-groomed personality. Uh, they're likable, friendly, they're a good talker. Um, uh, it may be somewhat aloof in manner and appear hard to know or meet. Uh, good style is important. And then you have the number eight personality, uh, should always be well-dressed, present a successful appearing personality, likes good materials, um, so uh, very interested in like the minor details is generally not overlooked in business associations or social gatherings. Um, oh, and got a little bit of the persuasion there. And then we have a nine personality. This is a number nine, which is, uh, if you remember, that's what I got. Uh, should never wear black, but often does, feeling well-dressed according to fashion in black. The nine is all-inclusive and gains through the use of color in business and as the expressions of the personality. A good fellow um, so more of the like the the serious type and I'm like well that's not me but I, I do like to wear my my black when I want to look sophisticated so but I don't know maybe that's not really the, <laughs> the with a um, vibe I'm trying to give off so hmm, maybe I need to take a look at that I'm interested to see what you guys got for your personality number but remember we're going on to the next section which is our reality number. So that's going to be our ultimate goal in life. You know, as we get older, we get into our retirement years, our ultimate goal and what we want probably has changed since we were uh, much younger. So how you get your uh, ultimate goal number is you're actually going to take your destiny number and your birth number and you're going to add them together. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to take my uh, destiny which is a six and I'm going to take my birth force number which is an eight and I'm just going to add them together okay that comes out to a 14 which is a number five for our reality number So let's see what Juno Jordan has to say about our reality number. So um, what were what the overarching um, need theme or want is later on in our years. Uh, she gives a lot of really good examples. Like she talks about Henry Ford and she talks about some other people, which at the time these were people in the news. And, you know, and as I'm like reading through it, I was like, wait a minute, why is she, why is she talking about these, all these historical people? And actually these were just people of her time, which is <laughs> pretty interesting. Um, okay. So, um, if you got a one reality number, and again, this is what your ultimate goal is, uh, when you are older, uh, the talents, abilities, interests, and individuality of the number one will support the later days of life or the latter days of life. The individual will be very independent, very clever, and find originality of thought, giving opportunity for leadership. A number two reality number uh, diplomacy is open to the number two, the talent for getting on with others and bringing many people together for a common good in public works and friendly association means success. 
So uh, we're talking about the arts, music, museums, libraries. Uh, they give pleasure and opportunity. Um, and then if you got a number three reality, um, the opportunity for a rich, full life is present. The privilege of true self-expression, perhaps greater than any time during the life. Even the character who has not previously been able to express the thoughts and feelings in words, music, gaiety, or along any line of creative interest will be surprised at the growth and development which comes in this respect. A number four reality, the opportunity to actually accomplish and put into form many of the ideas not before possible is present. There will be work to do and many practical circumstances to meet in order, uh, in, meet in order that a foundation may be placed to build upon. Um, if you got the number five uh, reality number, which let me take a look. Yep, that was me. Um, this does not promise retirement and indicates an active latter days of life. It is not a dull period. It gives opportunity for travel and uh, a variety of experiences, a great deal of freedom of action and thought. Actually, my real, <laughs> you know, reality number, I know that I'm just using a, um, a non-real name right now. That's actually my reality number. <laughs> it's like, even when I make up a name, it seems that my numbers are the same. That's Quite interesting. Okay, a six reality number. The latter days for this uh, number six should be filled with a useful endeavor having to do with humanitarian service. Um, through the service, love and protection will be the reward for the latter days of life. A number seven reality. The right to retire and to follow the mental interests is present because the seven has specialized knowledge gained through the years. Others will seek this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. So just kind of thinking about how you can translate that into, well, once you are older, I suppose, translate that into something that you do that will fulfill that and uh, ultimately fulfill uh, what you're longing for, or what you're needing. We have a number eight reality. The promise of recognition, position, and authority for the latter days of life is present. Life will demand good character, self-discipline, courage, and executive ability. Um, and then we get to the last number, which is a nine reality. The world of uh, uh, philanthropy is the reward of the number nine reality for the latter days of life. Service to mankind and the realization of the brotherhood of man is part of the reward. To be able to live above the jealousies, fears, and greed of mankind is part of the victory of the latter days. All right. Very, very interesting. I wonder what you guys got. Um, okay. So the last part of this video, um, well, for our part two, I should say, we're going into the planes of expression. Um, so uh, let's see. I think I think we have room on this paper. Um Okay, let me write some things down. I will get back to you. Okay, so I did a little bit of writing on the side. So we have our physical plane, we have our mental plane, our emotional plane, and our intuitive plane. So these are the four, uh, I would say, planes that uh, make up uh, each and every one of us. So uh, there are numbers that are assigned to those different planes. So um, numbers that have to do with like physical, you know, our, our physical reality, our world, our fours and fives, um, mental numbers are ones and eights, emotional numbers are twos, threes, and sixes, and intuitive, intuitive numbers are sevens and nines. So what we need to do is go into where we originally assigned numbers uh, for every letter in our name, which we've done up here. And we're going to find out how many of each of these numbers are in here. So for example, um, first we're going to be looking at the physical plane. So I need to find all the fours and all the fives that are in my name. So how many fours are in here? So we would say there's one four. Um, and then how many fives? Well, looks like there's only one five here. So we have one five. Okay. So we do just like that. And then, uh, uh, hopefully you guys are following along, so go ahead and um, do that. So I'm, now I'm going to look for the ones and eights. So I have one, two, three, four, five. I have five ones. Okay, and now I'm going to look for my eights. Mm, there are no eights. So I'm just going to go like this. 
Um, now I'm going to look for my twos, threes, and sixes. And I'll actually finish this up while you guys work on yours. Okay, so I've now figured them out. So I have on my physical plane, I have one four, one five. On my mental plane, I have five ones. On my emotional plane, I have two twos and one six. Again, getting those numbers up here. And in my intuitive plane, I have four nines. Okay, so uh, first you can take a look and see which numbers are missing. Um, you know, because that means something too. So if on a mental plane, let's say for instance, you don't have a whole lot of numbers on the mental plane, doesn't mean that you're not smart. It just means that um, perhaps that's, you know, a skill that you want to build, you know, being more uh, looking into logic and looking into, you know, um, more, you know, physical reality. Um, uh, Juno Jordan says there are many people with super high IQs that don't have a lot of numbers on the mental plane. And that's just because that's not where they live. Some of them live on the emotional plane and some of them live on the intuitive plane um, or maybe even the physical plane. So this has no nothing to do with your IQ. Um, a lack of numbers uh, maybe on the emotional plane could be mean that it's, it's difficult for you to express your ideas and how you feel. Um, too many numbers might feel that maybe that you're bombarded by emotions. Maybe um, you're empathic and sometimes you feel like uh, uh, things could be too much when it comes to feeling. Um, so just think about that, you know, um, when there's an excess of numbers, a lack of numbers. Um, so now we're going to find what's considered our totals. What our totals are is the planes are expressed. So so here we have these numbers, those kind of indicate um, like how we um, show our talents in each of these planes and then the totals are how they are expressed. So totals being this, see how there's one, four and one, five. I'm just counting one plus one <laughs> is a two total. So meaning there's two numbers on that particular plane and see how there's five ones. Well, that means there's five numbers on this particular plane. And then two plus one, that means there's three numbers on this particular plane and four nines. That means there's four numbers here. Okay. And so that just, you know, again, is just more, more flavor for this overall picture. So you want to look at things overall. So when you're looking at this, don't just look at the numbers here and say, oh, this is me you have to start looking at things in the broader sense, you know, so I know that this is a made up name for myself. Um, but let's say we go to the intuitive. Okay. I have four nines. Okay. Well, I'm, you know, what does that mean? What does, uh, the number four, uh, mean, you know, the essence of that number in relation to this. And what does that mean, uh, when it's connected to my destiny? So meaning opportunities that are available for me, you know, is that something I want to take a look at? Um, my heart's desire is a six, you know, so it's in line with my destiny. Um, you know, what does that say about uh, how I am over here? You know, my birth force number, my personality, how others see me. You know, if I have a number that's, uh, you know, they say this is an intuitive type number. Well, look like, it looks like this matches up. You know, how others see me is actually, you know, what I got going on here. I got a lot of intuitive abilities going on here and that, uh, you know, matches up nicely with how others see me. So that's very interesting. You know, so you got to look at all these numbers together, your reality number, you know, what you ultimately want to do later in life. And so, uh, I encourage you to, you know, find, find your numbers here. So, okay, we're going to take a look at what Juno Jordan says about these numbers. So for instance, if you got a, a one, like it talks about the one on all of these planes, two on all of these planes. So if I got um, a, a number one total, so these are looking at the totals. So, well, I don't have any number ones, but I do have a number two. So let's say you got a number one on the physical plane. So it's going over all the planes. So did you have a one on the physical plane? No. Do you have a one on the mental plane? No. You have a one on the uh, emotional plane? No. Intuitive plane? No. <laughs> so that's, that's how it's written. That's, that's what it means. Okay. But if you did have a, a number one on any of those planes, I'm just going to briefly go over those planes. So uh, number one on a physical plane. And again, these are your totals. Uh, means you're very active and enthusiastic, outgoing, 
If you got a one on a mental plane, you have original thought, deductions, you're witty. If you got a one on an emotional plane, you're changeable, original, capable of meeting all kinds of people. Uh, a one intuitive is great inspiration. Ideas come quickly like a flash. Um, and of course, it goes into a lot more detail here. Um, like I said, you guys can totally check out this book. Uh, if you got a number two on any of these planes, ooh, did I get a number two? I did on the physical plane. Let's take a look. Sensitive, very apt to lack self-confidence. <laughs> Needs to be with people, I do. Uh, gives attention to details. Charm and cleverness is gather in gathering information. Ooh. Um, okay, if we... Uh, got a number two on the mental plane, accumulates, collects knowledge, things, and information, strong and firm in convictions, although naturally cooperative and agreeable. A two emotional is sensitive to music, rhythm, timing, receives ideas and impressions through sensitivity. A two intuitive is ultra sensitive to spiritual facts, feels so much it wonders why others do not understand, uh, can be radical and an extremist. If you got a three on these planes, oops, did I get a number three? I got a number three on the emotional plane. Okay. Um, so a three on the physical plane demonstrates and expresses in an artistic manner on the material plane. Functions in a three manner, even in practical manners. Matters. Uh, a three mental is creative on the mental plane, uses knowledge and facts in a creative manner and colors them with imagination and vision. A three emotional is very imaginative and personal where emotions are concerned, both in work and in love affairs. A three intuitive colors ideas from on high with imagination, a much personal feeling capable of inspiring others to higher interests in faith. Um, let's see. And then we go, I think I have a number four. Let me look. Oh, I got a four total on my intuitive plane. Um, okay, a four on a physical plane is a hard worker, organizer, manager, carries out ideas for others easily. A four mental is a planner, executive in charge of affairs, large or small, gets results. A four emotional has good evaluation, sense of form, and practical values colored by artistic feeling. Uh, stubborn if held down or restricted over too long a period. A four intuitive, uh, not truly creative, cannot be depended upon for imagination. It does not care too much for the vague or abstract. Hey, well, I am using a fake name. <laughs> I actually got really high numbers um, on the intuitive for, um, I think it was nines and sevens. Um, was it? Yeah, it was nines and sevens for my real name. Okay, uh, if you got a five total um, on the physical plane, uh, contacts people, likes to travel, um, succeeds through work having to do with public, uh, giving an active, uh, giving an active life, adapts to change, good salesman when interested, um, a five mental is quick in thought and action, curious. A five emotional is a searcher and investigator, wants to know and find out what others feel. A five intuitive can get anything from the intuitive plane, understands higher law. And then we go into our sixes. So if you got a six, did I get a six? Um, no, I got a, I got a five mental. Ooh, so I was a five mental. Hold on. Oh, so that was the quick thought in action. Oh, okay. Interesting. Okay. And then, um, if you guys got a number six total anywhere, so maybe a six on the physical plane, uh, works with things of beauty, practical arts, dietitians, professional service and practical manner. A six mental carries responsibility, can be depended upon to do what it has been asked to do or has been promised to do. A six emotional expresses beauty, harmony, music, and helpful service feels things deeply and tears itself to pieces through um, worry over someone who does not do the right thing. A six intuitive apt to be quite personal about faith and religion may put people on a pedestal and then experience disappointment because others do not live up to its ideals. And if you got a seven on any of your planes, maybe you got a seven physical 
mathematician, broker, analyst, technical worker, does excellent work in a field of scientific endeavor. A seven mental, very introspective, can be a recluse, wants to be alone and work alone. A seven emotional, thoughtful, selective, reserved, sometimes repressed emotions. A seven intuitive can be great adepts, teachers, can probe deeply into abstract and gain occult knowledge and understanding, should not repress its feelings for health's sake. Um, and remember, I'm overly simplifying all of these. I definitely want you guys to look um, more deeply into uh, the meanings of uh, the numbers, you know, and do a little Google search, or maybe you already have some numerology books and you can apply it to the exercises that you've been doing. And number eight on the mental plane, oh, sorry, is a mental number. Uh, on the physical plane, it's an ambitious for power, position, and authority, gains recognition, has executive ability, able to handle big things. Um, an eight mental, natural, executive, very ambitious mentally for power and position. An eight emotional, strong feelings, strength of emotion, dominant and businesslike in love affairs. An eight intuitive enters into the higher realms with a perfect sense of power, can be organizer of religious activities and philosophical societies or groups. And lastly, if you got a number nine, which is an intuitive number on all the planes. Uh, so let's look at the number nine physical. A publisher, importer, writer, dramatic actor, uh, instructor, director, where the spectacular is required. Uh, a nine mental, capable of meeting and working with people of all races and nations. Sometimes finds it difficult to pin mine down to right now. Uh, maybe thinking of planning for big things while the things at hand need attention. A nine emotional, very dramatic, great sense of importance, always acts in a dramatic manner, likes the attention of admiring groups or crowds. A nine intuitive, uh, which is actually what I got um, in my real name, uh, brings down unusual ideas from on high. This inspiration can influence many people, inclined to dwell in the abstract, even by vague and indefinite. All right. So that is the end of that section. Uh, it does talk about a cipher on any of the planes. A cipher is a zero. So like meaning you didn't, you, you didn't have one of those numbers. So remember, if we look back here, the physical plane has fours and fives. I had a four and a five. Mental plane has ones and eights. I didn't have any eights. So that would be a cipher, a cipher number. Um, twos, threes, and sixes. I had a two and a six, but no three. And I didn't have a number seven on the intuitive because that intuitive plane is sevens and nines. So those would be ciphers. So any ciphers, missing numbers in any of these areas would be here. So a cipher in the physical plane could just mean a lack of physical endurance or practical application. Um, it could also mean like if you didn't have, like a cipher could mean like you didn't, you didn't have any number, like... <laughs> Like you didn't have any of the physical numbers, um, you know, just based off of your name, maybe you didn't have any of the mental numbers, the emotional numbers. So it's like this whole section is blank. Um, could also be a, a cipher. Um, actually, yeah, that, that is a cipher. <laughs> so like, let's say you didn't get any mental numbers. You could find it difficult to meet the cold, hard uh, mental facts of life does not explain the what or why with logic or mental relationships. Um, nothing on the emotional plane could be emotion is not easily expressed, does not express its ideas well in words or fancy. Uh, if you didn't get any words on the intuitive or like a lack of any words, <laughs> any numbers on the intuitive or a lack of numbers, not apt to be interested in the impressions and abstract ideas of the intuitive nature, maybe lacking in real philanthropic interests and the forgiveness natural to the higher planes. So there you go. So that is the end of part two. So this is our four part series. So all of these are just kind of meant to help, um, you know, try to take a deeper look into yourself, just like we use our tarot cards, our oracle cards. Um, you know, some of us might even go to a counselor. We do meditation. We look within. Numerology is just another one of those ways to be able to look at ourselves and say, okay, um, with these things that I know about myself, um, what could I do to create the life that I want? Um, 
So, yeah. or finding out what your heart's desire is. So the more you know yourself, the better you are at making the uh, better choices for yourself and um, going on the path that you think is best for you. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. So like I said, in part one, if you are interested in finding out your destiny number, your heart's desire number, or birth force number, definitely check it out. Today, we found out our personality number, so how others see us. We found out our reality number, um, kind of what we're going to be driving for or looking for later in life. And we found our um, planes of expression. Actually, let me write that name down here. So we have our planes of expression. Okay, so... Yay. So we have all our numbers there, you know, um, you know, what, what, how many numbers we have on all these different planes. So again, we have our totals, but it's good to look at the overall picture, what numbers repeat, what lack of numbers are there that always means something, um, you know, so not just looking at just this part or just this part or I got ink on myself, but that's okay. Or just this part or, you know, whatever it may be. Uh, we don't want to look at anything through tunnel vision. We want to look at everything as a whole because, you know, it, it's like, um, it's like if you, if you looked only at my, my knees <laughs> and not at the rest of me, you wouldn't be able to see me in my entirety. It's like, you'd only see my knees and be like, wow, those are some interesting knees. I see you have a scar there. <laughs> um, but you don't see the rest of me. Uh, and so looking at my knees means nothing. Um, until you look at the whole person. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Um, when you join me for part three, we're going to be looking at what's called our challenge number, which I think is fascinating. And it's basically a number that's going to chase us our whole life through, just like most of these numbers here. Uh, we're going to be looking at a number called our point of security, and we're going to be looking at our pin uh, pinnacles. Um, which uh, affect different phases of our life. And right now, I am in a nine pinnacle. You guys will figure out what that means next time. <laughs> so anyway, I look forward to uh, your comments and questions and uh, what you guys think about this and, and all of that good stuff. And if you guys dug this video, you want more videos just like this, don't forget to give this a thumbs up. Don't forget to click subscribe and don't forget to click that ding, 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 notification bell for more videos just like this. And if you want to catch a reading from me, head over to www.kittensweightsandtarot.com. And there is not a lot of time left for you guys to jump on that um, Kickstarter train and back the Wally's World Oracle. So he only has a few days left. So it's May 12th, this Sunday at 1 p.m. is the last day. So we can bring Wally's world to life uh, so that, uh, you know, that deck of healing can get into as many hands as possible so people can, uh, you know, start their healing journey or be an aid into their healing journey. And uh, yeah, that's it for me, spiritual homies. I will catch you later. Peace, love, and chicken grease. Peace out.